What's up guys? I'm Daniel Thomas, this is Travels with Thomas Soros, your one-stop shop for everything travel related, and in this video I'm going to teach you how to prepare for interrailing. So how are you guys doing? If you haven't visited this channel before, don't forget to subscribe. So, today I'm going to talk about preparing for interrailing. So I went interrailing a couple of months ago and had a great time but there were a few challenges that we weren't expecting, just preparing for it. So I'm gonna go over those for you today so that you can prepare yourself and then you won't run into any issues. So firstly, make sure that you plan well in advance because even without booking all the hotels, hostels, etc., flights, whatever, trains, it takes about three weeks for your interrail passes to arrive. So you've gotta prepare yourself just to wait for your interrail passes to arrive, Never mind anything else. Secondly, you've got to decide how long you're going to go for. So you're going to go for a few days, a few weeks, a month um, on the Interrail website itself, which I'll link in the description below. You can uh, find out everything you need because you've got things like travel five days in seven or travel 10 days in 30, things like that, which means that in a 30 day period, you can only travel on a train for 30 days, or at least with your Interrail pass, you can obviously book trains separately and pay for those outside of the Interrail period. So really, working out how long you're gonna go for is the first step, but secondly, you want to then work out where you're gonna go. Because if you're going for like a long time, then, you know, you can go loads of places because you've got the time, but only if you're only going for two weeks like we did, you've got to limit your choices. So we went to five countries, we went to um, Amsterdam, we went to Munich, we then went on to Prague, and then Vienna, and finally we finished in Budapest. So that mean, meant that in the sort of 10, 11 days we had, we, man we managed to get two days in each location. So that brings me on to my third point. How long are you gonna stay in each location? So this sort of ties into the last one. If you're going for a long time, you can go to many places, you know, stay in a few places for a few days, maybe even a week if you want to. Whereas if you're going for a short time like we did, you know, you've gotta get as much in as little time as possible. So, you know, it's really important that you're planning how long you're gonna stay in each location. So once you've decided how long you're gonna go for, where you're gonna go, next you wanna decide how are you going to pack? So if you go in to hot countries, so say you're going to Italy or you're going through France or Spain, somewhere like that, then you're going to pack you know, nice warm clothes and you can travel light, which is great. You want to travel light when you're interrailing because you're going to be carrying around big, heavy um, rucksacks or luggage around with you for however long you're going. So you want to travel light. So if you are going somewhere slightly colder, perhaps you're going to the Scandinavian countries or perhaps more Eastern Europe in perhaps the winter time like we did, you do want to pack warmer clothes, but yet again, you're just going to have to pack as light as possible. You're going to have to perhaps, you know, just accept the fact that you're going to end up wearing the same clothes for a few days. You know, you are going to smell a bit, but in the long run, it's better. So that sort of brings me on to my next point about what are you going to take it all in, you know, because I advise take a rucksack because, you know, you don't want to be dragging around something like a suitcase for two weeks, three weeks, a month, how long you go. And you want, you want to take a rucksack because you're going to be getting on and off trains, you're going to be walking long distances, you're going to constantly be moving around, so it doesn't help if you take a, um, a rucksack. One person we were with took a rucksack, their wheel fell off. In Munich, we then had to go and spend half a day looking around a store to find him a replacement that he could afford. So next, after you've decided where you're going to go, how long you're going to go for, what you're going to take, and you've bought your rucksack, or at least thought about um, buying your rucksack, I'll link the one that I bought down below in the description because it was a great rucksack, 60 litres, it was a perfect size for what we needed. Next, you've then got to decide, are you going to stay in hostels or hotels? You know, that's an entirely personal choice. We stayed in hostels mainly because we couldn't afford to stay in hotels. If you can afford to stay in hotels, great, that's amazing. I mean, you know, you're going to be having a really luxurious trip, but we unfortunately had to stay in hostels. Well, I don't say unfortunately because we had some great adventures there, but you know, we had to stay in hostels and it really sort of brought home to us, you know, just how cheap you can interrail really. Because, you know, we were paying something like 10 euros a night each for a hostel and it was just, you know, really cheap. And it meant that we could then use the money we'd saved there, not going to hotels on other things. So hostels definitely advise if your budget's tight. If you can afford hotels though, go hotels. It's, up to, it's entirely up to you. Okay, so those are the sort of like the main sort of points I want to make as far as, um, preparing for interrailing goes but there's a few other points I just want to make just just sort of that we weren't prepared for and I just want to make, sort of get them out there so that you know what to expect so one of those points is that booking the trains you don't have to reserve every train 
Um, you have to reserve some. So if you go onto the Interrail website, which I will link below, you can find all the information about the trains you have to book, and then you can actually book them online as well on that website, which is great. It just makes everything so much easier. What I will say, though, is another point is that one or two train companies you might not be able to book online. So we had to get a night train from uh, Cologne to Munich. Actually, it ended up being Dusseldorf to Munich, but you couldn't book that online. We had to ring up, which did lead to a little bit of confusion because the language barrier and everything, you know, we were trying to talk in English. They were trying to sort of get across to us in their best English, but sometimes, you know, there was a bit of a mix up, but we did manage to sort it out. And that's how we knew that even though on the Interrail website, it said that the night train was from Cologne to Munich, it actually, we had to get uh, to Dusseldorf, which is about a 20 minute train journey away, purely because um, the line was closed at Cologne and we didn't know that because it wasn't on the website. So we had to talk to a lady about that. So just be prepared that you might have to talk to somebody. Also another tip that's really, really good. If you book a night train after 7 p.m. and it arrives at its destination after 4 a.m. the next morning, that journey counts as the day before. So you're not wasting a day's journey. So essentially, uh, you can get a day almost for free. Plus also, if you use a night train instead of a hotel or a hostel as well, you can travel while you sleep. So it, it actually, especially if you're on a shorter holiday, gives you more time because you're not um, sleeping in one location and go catch a train the next morning. You can actually do the traveling whilst you sleep. And the last point I want to make is if you're approaching 28, book it now, book into rail now, because when you get to 28, the prices go up 27 and below you get a youth ticket and the prices are very reasonable 28 and above you're then looking at an adult ticket and the prices do go up quite considerably so you'll definitely if you get approaching 28 one of and you want to go into railing book book it now so guys i hope you really enjoyed this video uh and i hope you do go into railing and when you do you have a great time uh so don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up also subscribe to my channel because I've got loads of information I want to give you. I'm also going to give you a little bit of a rundown about how our interrailing trip went um, in the coming weeks. So watch out for that. And I will see you then. So see you next time.